In this lecture we are going to see given an equation of parabolic type how to get it into its canonical form. Uh, for parabolic type equation remember we want to model it after heat equation. How does heat equation look like? It is ut equal to uxx right. So, in the second order part for example, let us write down ut equal to uxx this is the heat equation. In this if you look at the part where the second order partial derivatives appear that is simply uxx. In particular uxt is not present and utt is also not present. So, this is what we are planning to do given an equation of parabolic type equation which is parabolic at every point in some domain we want to change coordinates. So, that the transformed equation will feature exactly one such second order partial derivative where it is with respect to the same variable x and x the other variable is completely absent. So, let us state the hypothesis uh, which is required to do this there is not really any hypothesis here it is very standard very simple and what is to be expected. So, let this equation be parabolic in a region omega of the x y plane this is a second order linear equation we assume these coefficients a b c are at least continuous we need that we need that and take a point in omega. So, the theorem uh, as before uh, for the case of uh, hyperbolic equations it is going to be of local nature that is why we take a point x 0 y 0 in the domain omega where the equation is parabolic. Conclusion is that there is an open set containing this point x 0 y 0 and a change of coordinates x y go going to xi eta that is a new coordinate system when the equation 2 L is expressed in the xi eta coordinates it will look like this. If you notice here w eta eta this is the only second order partial derivative which appears. So, none of the second order derivatives involving the variable xi appears. So, given that the equation is parabolic in omega what does that mean b square minus a c is 0 in omega. So, to have a second order partial differential equation we need that at least one of the functions a b c is not 0 at every point of omega. So, we know this all of them cannot be simultaneously 0 we are not allowing such coefficients. Therefore, either a is not 0 or c is not 0 ok. If it does not happen what will happen a and c both of them are 0 at x 0 y 0. The moment a c is 0 this equation tells b square is also 0 at that point that means b of x naught y naught is 0. It means all the 3 namely a of x naught y naught b of x naught y naught and c of x naught y naught are 0 and that is not allowed. Therefore, we have this either this is not 0 or this is non 0 at least one of them happens. So, assume without loss of generality that a is non 0 and here is a twist and c is now also not 0 ok. We can arrange this what we are concluding in the previous slide is that given any equation of parabolic type at any point in the domain x naught y naught at least one of the a or c is non 0. But now we are saying that we can make it happen that both of them are non 0, but after a change of variables. Imagine a is non 0 and c is 0 at the point x naught y naught. Then let us introduce a change of coordinates x y going to x tilde y tilde where x tilde is defined as a function of x y is just x and y tilde as a function of x y is x plus y. So, then the equation 2 L takes the form where the coefficients of w x tilde x tilde and w y tilde y tilde are non 0 at this point x tilde equal to x naught y tilde equal to x naught plus y naught ok. We have already uh, introduced uh, change of coordinates and how a PDE changes under change of coordinates into a new uh, equation right. Use those formulae and conclude this very simple exercise I will not be giving the details of this. So, therefore, we can assume that a is not 0 and c is not 0. 
So, the, there is one more case it may happen that A is 0 and C is not 0 then also we can introduce this change of coordinate such that we have W x tilde x tilde and W y tilde y tilde their coefficients are non-zero that can be arranged. Why are we doing this? Because in our proof we need that both A is non-zero and B non-zero. Because if A is non-zero it may happen that uh, B is 0 right what all the condition for parabolicity we have is B square minus A C is 0. So, A is non-zero C may be 0 in which case B is 0 we do not want that in our proof our proof will not work we require that both A and B are non-zero in a neighborhood of x0 y0. So, the moment we are now we have decided we can there is no loss of generality in assuming this. After assuming this A is a continuous function and it is not 0 at a point therefore, in an open set it will continue to be non-zero because of the continuity same thing will hold for C and hence for B also. Okay, if C is also not 0 what do we have? B square minus A C is 0, A is not 0 and C is not 0. What we know is this B square at x 0 y 0 B square minus A C is 0 therefore, I can write this is equal to A C. Okay. This is not 0 that means B is also not 0. Once B is also not 0 at the point x 0 y 0 in an open set it will be non-zero there are after all three functions a b c. So, we can take the same open set on which all of them are non-zero and recall the change of variables uh, xi and eta by the functions phi x y and psi x y then this is the inverse functions for that and the function u x y in terms of w is w of phi x y psi x y and w in terms of u is given by this equation. And we have seen that the 2 L the second order linear equation under this change of coordinates becomes this where the coefficients a b c which matter for the type of a equation are mentioned here. So, for proving the theorem wh what do we need? we need that only this should appear. So, C should be non-zero A and B must be 0. Suppose we choose the coordinate system such that A and B are 0. Once A and B are 0 C cannot be 0 because if all of them are 0 there is no differential equation we are not allowing that. So, A B 0 automatically means C is not 0 once C is not 0 you can divide this equation with C and get W eta eta with coefficient 1. So, this is what we want A and B to be 0 and once that happens C is automatically non-zero because at least one of the three functions A, B, C are non-zero at every point. So, thus we need to find the functions phi and psi such that phi satisfies this equation this is basically A equal to 0 and phi and psi satisfies this equation that is equation B equal to 0. If you observe this equation the first equation involves only phi and second equation involves both of them. So, we may say that there is a coupling between phi and psi the system couples both of them, but in some kind of weak coupling because one equation does not have uh, psi at all. The other one has psi, but then once you know phi it is an equation only for psi. Okay, this is something similar not exactly same analogous to what we have uh, in linear algebra. We have a linear system of equations which are triangular, okay. they are coupled but nicely coupled it is like that. So, since the first equation involves only phi we may solve for phi as we have done uh, in the previous lecture. Exactly same way we factorize, but now what happens b square minus a c is 0 if once b square minus a c is 0 this factor in this bracket parenthesis is same as this one. So, this equation reduces to this. So, therefore, we need to solve phi such that a phi x plus b phi y is 0 and choose psi arbitrarily. Okay. We do not want to go back and solve that equation we will see in a moment why, why that is so. 
what all we want is a certain uh, change of coordinate system that is all we want. And if you notice if A is 0, B is automatically 0. So, there is no need to check that that is satisfied. B square minus AC is 0 right. So, if A is 0 then AC is 0 therefore, B square is 0 therefore, B must be 0. So, there is no need to check the equation for B. There is no need to check the equation for B because B of xi eta equal to 0 is satisfied by any function psi as long as phi satisfies the equation A of xi eta equal to 0. That is why we have lots of choices for psi because the only constraint on psi now is that the Jacobian of phi and psi is non-zero which will give that uh, xi equal to phi xy eta equal to psi xy will define a coordinate change transformation. So, we choose psi arbitrarily with only one constraint namely this should give rise to a change of coordinates which means certain Jacobian non-zero. And with the choice of phi as above we have a equal to 0 right and consequently b is 0 because the equation type is invariant under change of coordinates. Let us uh, look at the solutions of this equation a phi x plus b phi y equal to 0. System of characteristic ODEs is given by dx by dt equal to a, dy by dt equal to b, dz by dt equal to 0. So, this says that any solution of this PDE is constant along solutions of the base, base characteristic solutions of this ODE. Along each base characteristic solution is going to be a constant. So, assume that phi of x y equal to k represents a one parameter family of solutions to this ODE. Of course, this ODE represents base characteristic curves. On differentiating this equation phi of x y x equal to k we get a relation this is by chain rule we get this identity and then we get dy by dx equal to b by a and on the other hand we get minus phi x by phi y. Now we need to choose psi such that this transformation x y going to phi x y psi x y is a non singular transformation namely the Jacobian is not equal to 0 at the point x 0 y 0 we are looking at only x 0 y 0. So, applying the inverse function theorem we conclude that xi eta equal to phi x y psi x y defines a new, new coordinate system near x 0 y 0. Okay, we have to find psi such that this condition is satisfied non singularity of this transformation then rest will follow. Now, to achieve this phi and psi need to satisfy this Jacobian to be non zero then you can apply in inverse function theorem right. If the Jacobian is non-zero at x naught y naught then you can invert the transformation which is coming here x y going to phi x y psi x y can be inverted back. So, xi eta going to capital phi of xi eta and uh, capital eta of xi eta we can do that sorry capital psi of psi eta. So, what do you mean by this is equal to 0 or not equal to 0 it just means that this quantity phi x by phi y and psi x by psi y are not equal because this is 0 means they are equal not equal to 0 means they are not equal. So, we have to find psi ok. Now, we will use this condition this is not equal to phi x by phi y there are infinitely many such choices, but we make a nice choice nice looking choice for theoretical purpose when we are dealing with an example we may not necessarily do like this. So, this is what we know for, for phi x by phi y. So, therefore, we choose psi such that psi x by psi y is a by b. Okay. If you look uh, multiply these two things you get minus 1 minus b by a into a by b is minus 1. So, this means that the curves corresponding to phi equal to constant and psi equal to constant are orthogonal families of curves. So, with these choices of phi and psi inverse function theorem guarantees that xi eta defines a coordinate transformation near the point x 0 y 0 and therefore, a and b are 0 c is definitely non 0 c cannot be 0. Now, you divide the equation with c and you get what you want w eta eta plus these terms do not matter what they are this alone matters. And this is known as the canonical form for a parabolic equation. 
So, canonical form for a parabolic equation means uh, the second order derivatives exactly one of them appears and one variable is missing which means it should be w eta eta okay, and w eta xi, w xi xi do not appear. Let us look at an example here of course all the derivatives of u are appearing is not clear. So, we have to find what is the type of this equation a is x square b is minus x y c is y square. So, therefore, b c minus a square is 0. So, the equation is parabolic at every point in R2, parabolic everywhere in R2. This equation is not well defined at 0 0 x y equal to 0 0 because all a b c vanish. Therefore, we do not want to include such a point in our consideration. So, we will find its canonical form in the right half plane and this restriction is a technical one as I pointed out because the method uh, followed here is valid only if we avoid x equal to 0 or y equal to 0. So, canonical form can be found in any of the half planes uh, not necessarily right half plane you can do in the left half plane or you can do upper half plane or lower half plane. So, let us uh, transform the equation into its canonical form in the right half plane. So, we need to find a new coordinate system for that we have to solve this will give us a phi dy by dx equal to minus y by x will give us phi of x y and then we have to make a choice for psi that is a procedure in the parabolic equations. So, solutions are very easy here. So, they are given by x y equal to constant. So, we need to uh, choose psi right such that Jacobian is non zero. Once you plug in the values of phi in this okay, this is this should be phi actually not xi and eta but phi phi x phi y. So, here it will be y here it will be x. So, y and x are there you need to fill with somebody so that uh, Jacobian is non zero I have chosen it to be x because I will get this and x is not 0 in my domain in the right half plane x is never 0. So, we introduce this change of uh, coordinates on differentiating this equation u x y equal to w of x y comma x and compute the derivatives and then go back and substitute in the given equation. So, u x u y compute like this u x x is this and u x y is this, u y y is this. Please do the computations on your own, pause the video, do the computations. And substituting these values in the given equation, we will get this. Of course, this equation still has x and y. So, it can be written in completely in, in terms of xi eta on expressing x and y as functions of xi eta. That is nothing but writing the inverse function. So, x equal to capital phi xi eta is eta, y equal to capital psi xi eta is xi by eta. This transformation makes sense because eta is never 0 in our domain, eta is 0 if and only if x is 0 and we are working in a domain where x is not 0. So, therefore, the transformed equation will be this and we want this to be 1, so divide with eta square. So, we get this expression. So, this is the canonical form of the given PDE. Notice only w eta eta appears, w eta xi or w xi xi do not appear. That is how the canonical form is identified for parabolic equation. So, what we did today is uh, we have devised a method to reduce second order linear PDE which is a parabolic type to its canonical form and it was implemented uh, successfully in, in an example. So, in the next lecture we will take up uh, equation of elliptic uh, type and get the canonical form for such equations. Thank you.